Evening everybody. I do my usual Friday night uh, thumbs up or just let me know in the chat that the volume's okay and that you can see the fly and all that stuff's good. Hi Devin. That's cool. That's cool. I hope you're all well. And I hope that uh, Storm Eunice hasn't caused too much havoc in your area or in your gardens. I know we got a couple of fence panels that are down in our garden, a couple of trees along in our in our local area. Um, but I hope it's not too bad for you guys. Tonight we're going to um, we're going to try and get through three flies tonight. Um, I have done three flies in the past, and so we may go past the sort of quarter past um, uh, uh, the quarter past nine um, section. But hey, we'll just see who stays on. Um, we're going to be looking at sedges, caddis, uh, which are some of my absolute favourite flies, um, and also catch me a lot of fish. Um, and this particular one that you can see in front of you is one that we're going to tie tonight. Um, and um, it looks uh, pretty, it looks complicated, you can miss out steps, you can change things, but it's just the, the techniques that we're going to look at um, to influence our tying. Um, this particular fly, not in this exact format, but this particular fly uh, is one that um, I've caught uh, at least two very large grayling on the Derbyshire Y a few weeks back. Um, and uh, so I'll be tying up a lot of these for my for my grading box, um, but the trout like them too. So we're into the caseless caddis here, um, using some latex and various other um, materials that you you might have or you might not have. But don't worry if you haven't, you can substitute lots of other things into it as well. Um, so um, we got lots of people online, so we're going to get started as quickly as possible because I want to fit the three flies in today. Um, I'm still buzzing from last weekend, to be fair, um, the, uh, the the BFFI. Um, Kieran and I um, travelled up. We met up with uh, most of the uh, rest of the admin, admin group. In fact, all of the admin group um, at various times. And um, it was great to be back in the fold to actually share ideas, speak to people, meet people who we've spoken to online for the first for a lot over the past 18 months two years but not actually got a chance to meet yet um also lots of cool materials that we that we were able to pick up so um we're going to start off here um i'm going to start off with with one of my uh, favorite hooks so we're going to start off with my uh, fully mill um check nymph hook um there it is the fm5065 for those of you that regularly tune in, you'll know I absolutely adore this hook. Um, you can tie dries on it. You can tie lots of stuff on it. It's just such a u universal hook. Um, it's ubiquitous, I, I would say. And I'm going to put on here a 3.5 mil tungsten, tungsten bead because this is this is a heavy pattern. This is going to get down quickly, particularly in a fast flow. Um, I want it to get down into the right areas for those low... Um, those low sitting big fish. I wanted to get past all those, hopefully all those little, little nice smaller grading, the, the yearling type grading. I want them to get down. I wanted to get down to those heavily armor plated, um, beautiful, gorgeous ladies um, that, are, that are sitting just waiting. Um, so I'm going to put on a base thread. I'm just using here um, 12 or Semperfly wax thread. Um, again, another universal thread that is just you know if you got if you got brown olive um, black uh, you can't go far wrong most patterns are going to going to take those and i'm going to take this right the way down i'm going to take it quite far down to the to so that my um my bobbin and my thread uh is horizontal okay and i'm just going to take that there and i'm just going to remove the tag end and then what I'm going to do, and I'll, I'll explain this in a moment, I'm going to make a loop. OK, I'm going to make a loop of thread at this base here. And I'm going to have one part of it on one side, one part of it on the other. And I'm just going to bring my bobbin just underneath it. 
bring my fingers back round and just lock it in place. Now once that's in, I'm just going to put it to one side. Don't need to do anything with that. I'm going to lock it into my material clip, keep it out of the way. And I'm going to bring my thread back up the shank in line with the hook point. Now, I said I wanted this to be really heavy. So to make it really heavy, I've got the, the 3.5 mil black tungsten bead there. But I'm also going to build up the body, underbody with flat lead. And I'm using um, sheet lead that's uh, adhesive on the back. Um, and I've just cut it with a scalpel to... Um, to about three mils and um, there it is to about three millimeters millimeters sorry um, and I'm literally just going to place it on the top of the hook shank and I'm going to bend it down over and around and then trap it down and I'm going to trap it down all the way around not all the way to the bottom but about three quarters of the way and then I'm going to bring myself all the way back up to my start point again. I'm just going to flatten down any edges. And using my nail and my finger, I'm just going to pull off the lead strip. There's plenty of lead here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my thread a couple of turns down. Because I want to build up a tapered, sort of a tapered body, I suppose. Um, I'm going to put another layer on top now this is a heavy fly you can you can leave off the lead you could um, add less layers um, you could use a brass bead um, you could actually tie it um, without a bead if you wanted it uh, to be free flowing um, in the in the stream in the flow but it's completely up to you so i'm just going to nip that off again and just bring that down you can see i've got a bit of a bulge there so i'm just going to use my nail just to push those down like that. Okay. And don't forget, all this is going to be hidden anyway. But it's always good to try and get it as neat as possible. Then I'm going to put a third layer on. Again, I'm going to bring it further down. And this is probably only going to be about a couple of millimetres of lead going down. And I'm going to bring my thread up. I'm just going to nip that off so we've got this this nice bulge here that's going to give the sort of like the curved back of a swimming caddis um, and in line with the hook point here is where i'm going to leave enough space for my thorax area and anything else that i'm going to be going to be putting in so i'm going to bring my tying thread halfway down again now this is where the latex comes in um, the latex um, for this is, let me just grab the packet so I can show you, um, is I picked up some more packets at the BFFI, um, but this is nymph skin. Um, this is uh, um, translucent three millimeters. Uh, you can get it in lots of different colors as well. In fact, some really gaudy colors, um, but I quite like the, the, the natural and the translucent. Um, it takes color really well. OK, um, and it's nice and stretchy. Um, but it does act a bit like a rubber band, so you've got to be quite careful because if you let go of it, it can ping back really quickly. So to tie this in, I'm going to take the end and I'm going to cut at the diagonal like so. And I'm going to place that diagonal just above my tying thread. And I'm going to trap it down, but now I'm going to pull the tight, pull the um, the nymph skin really tight, uh, because what I want to do is reduce any bulk at all. I'm going to tie it right down to the base and keep it as tight as I can, right down to the base, and then I'm going to bring my thread all the way back up. And I've left this little bit. You can grab my scissors. I've left this little bit at the top here because the great stuff about these elasticated materials is if you pull them taut and snip them they disappear back under the threads and as long as you trap them down properly you don't get you get very limited bulk building up there at all so i'm just going to build up a little bit more
just to tidy up. And then I'm going to bring this all the way back to the bead and I'm going to take my Mattarelli whip finish tool and I'm going to put whip finish at the end there. And this is where my bobbin cradle comes in, which I just pulled across. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it in my bobbin cradle and just get it completely out of the way. OK, so now this is where I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to swap to uh, this white nano silk. So Semperfly nano silk. Um, if you've not used nano silk, it is it is a really useful material to have in your armory. Um, and I'm literally going to tie on my nano silk so it's not going to go anywhere there we go oh i'm not going to use scissors on that almost forgot my cardinal rule i'm going to nip this off with a scalpel now nano silk is tough um, and nano silk by its very nature will blunt your scissors so please don't use your best scissors like my like my renome scissors um, i'm not going to use those i use a scalpel blade that i can replace very very cheaply um, and I'm going to bring this nano silk about three millimeters up from the base where I tied in where I tied in the nymph skin here. So about three millimeters, two to three millimeters. Um, and then I'm just going to check it out of the way. OK, and just hide, get that bobbin just out of my way because what I'm going to do now is start to wrap. Now the reason I've got two bobbins going will become apparent in a minute. Okay, um, it's not me just being clever. So I'm going to take this, the lint skin. I can already see an issue, which I just need to correct. I need to get it the right way around. There we go. So remember, this is does act. It is latex. It is a rubber, so it'll act like a rubber. And I'm going to. Pull it taut. I'm not going to pull it really tight. I'm, I want about. I want to just thin it down by about a quarter. Okay, in it in its uh, in its width, and I'm just going to bring this underneath underneath my nano silk, and then. I'm just going to work my, oh, I'll just let go of it then. See, it springs back. I am then going to just work my way up, keeping it taut so that I build up that segmented body effect. Okay, that you can start to see. I'm not too happy with that one, it's too wide. So I'm going to bring that one back down to there. Best to take your time and be happy with it. Then rush and go, do you know what? I don't like that. Because I've got so many flies in my box that I I tie and I've tied. And, I, and at the end of it, I've gone, hmm, they're okay. But do you know what? I never fish with them because it's a confidence thing. I'll fish with the ones that I like to like the look of, and I think, yeah, that, that'll really get the fish going. Um, so it's sort of very much a confidence thing. Um, so I'm just going to build these up into segmented layers. There we go. I'm going to take my time. No point in rushing in this wonderful pastime of ours and sport. What's the point? I'm going to bring it up. Don't matter. It doesn't matter if I take it right under the thorax area. There we go. And then I'm going to go back with my original brown Semperfly wax thread. And I'm going to hold this up, pull it tight. And I'm going to wrap down. I'm going to move my white Semperfly, put it in my material clip. And I'm going to wrap it round like that. Now, do not be fooled into cutting it early because it will just unravel and flick back. So I'm now going to put quite a few wraps down up to in line with the hook point. 
and then I'm going to have a look at it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Nano silk just fell, but never mind. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to pull it tight, the latex tight, snip it off, and it disappears underneath the thread wraps. Um, now, just because I was taught to be tidy, I'm just going to tidy it all up. And make sure it's as I want it. And there we go. Right, now, I'm going to come back with this. Now for this, I'm actually going to remove the brown thread, because it just makes it easier. I could leave it there, and I'm going to revert to my white nano silk. Now you, you remember that we made a loop right at the beginning. Um, now I'm going to use this loop to form a central lateral line down the nymph that would set that would indicate that it's uh it's a segment it's got segmentation above and below and it, and it changes the depth perception of it now i know that the fish will take it anyway but it's quite nice to be able to do so i've cut this in half so this loop i've got i've got two halves of um of my brown thread there we go two halves of my brown thread I'll just separate them out so they get stuck together and I've got one on each side if you can see that got one on each side now I am just going to adjust the position of my hook in the vise just because it makes it easier and what I want to do with these is I'm going to take them together I'm going to lay them side by side on either side of the latex and with the nano silk because it's so fine and narrow it will just fit snugly between the little sections of the latex and you won't actually notice it's there but it's going to trap down the brown thread I'm going to bring it on I'm going to do three to start because the one opposite you that's closest to the camera for you always always drops so i'm just gonna rotate my vice and just adjust it ever so slightly to bring it back in so that it's halfway so i'm happy with that i'm going to bring it back Ooh, i'm going to do this i'm going to just going to continue doing the same i'm not rushing no need to rush at all just adding more and more wraps it really does help if you if you can use both hands on these so I've got to this point here that's another three and I'm going to twist it again I'm going to look at it yep that's definitely moved so it's not where I would want it to be on this side so I'm just going to come in make sure I've got it and oh got the wrong one coming through there separate them out and draw it back into position. So those little adjustments really are quite important. And I'm going to come back. I've got to this point, and I'm going to readjust my hook again so that we are now back in the horizontal plane. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the next three. Two. And three. And I'm going to put one more on to lock it. And then I'm going to check it. And I'm checking the reverse side because that's always the side that causes the problem. And if you can see an issue, come in with a with a with um, a needle. Just give it a little little push. Put it in the position that you would like it in. There we go. That's fine. And put it back. And then I'm going to just tie those off, trim those away like that. And we can see on that, we can see that you've got this, what looks like it's stitched along, but it automatically 
from my viewpoint, I don't know about yours, but it also automatically makes the upper section look significantly wider and 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 bigger and more armored than the lower section it looks it looks less tough and a bit more um a bit more vulnerable on the insect um and uh so in terms of realistic flight iron it gives this really nice effect um and i'm just gonna tidy that up and i am gonna tie off with the white thread. Now I know I'm using lots of threads here. You don't have to. Um, and now I'm going to bring on a nano silk in olive because I want this to have this green section here at the front. So I'm just going to tie that in. There we go. Got a little wisp there. Let's get rid of you wisp there now you can do whatever you like at this point you could use some squirrel uh, fox squirrel you could use some hairs here um dubbing you could just uh you could just just add in whatever you like you could also add in um, i'm thinking earlier it'd be really cool um to add in um some um some semperfly silly legs to give it sort of that rycophila look um i'm going to use some um andrew scruffy dubbing there it is um, and I'm going to uh, to use this caddis green um, because I just I just love the colour and I also love Andrew's um, Andrew's dubbing. So I'm going to take a pinch. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of wax. I don't use a lot of wax in my tying because everything's pre-wax, but nano silk isn't. I'm just going to wax the nano silk, and I'm just going to form a little dubbing noodle. Nothing too complicated. And just space it out a little bit like that. And I'm going to form a thorax. It doesn't need to be too neat because actually the buggier it is, the better. Another little pinch. It's better to add little and often than to add too much right at the beginning and have to adjust it and go hmm that's too much and take it all off again i'd rather have to add stuff and and with the nano silk and the nano silk really doesn't build up a lot of um a lot of width there at all so we've, we've automatically we've got in a bit of a um we've got the under part of our of our thorax area now for this particular fly um, and this particular fly, remember, um, caught me that fish, at least, at least one of the fish that, when I was on the Y. Um, I'm going to put on a, um, a CDC hackle for the collar. Um, it gives it a bit of movement in the water. Um, and I, I don't want a lot. I want a medium sized feather. There it is. Um, and this is the bit where my, my camera just cut out last time. Um, I've got hairline uh, feather prepper, um, which is a bit of foam with some um, slots cut in it. It's really useful, and I love my Petitjean um, um, system that I've got, my magic tools. But this is really useful for prepping lots of feathers all in one go if you're doing lots of lots of uh, individual ties. Um, and I'm just going to push it down into the feather prepper. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, there it is, it's prepped the feather standing upright and then i'm just going to come in i'm going to nip the end bits off like that and i'm going to take my magic clip bulldog clip could do and i'm going to clip it hold it pull it out and i'm left there you go with my feather uh, so at this point I need my large scissors, which I had about 20 minutes ago, and now they seem to have uh, decided to take... Oh no, there they are, so I'll just go for a walkie. Um, big scissors, big long scissors, because I want to cut off this stalk in one go, rather than having to do multiple, multiple uh, cuts. So there we go. Now, next stage... Is, and the nano silk 
it lies really flat. But what it also does is um, it it can be split, and you can use it for a split thread. So we're going to do this in a split thread. Um, I had my split thread up. Spread the thread splitter here a minute ago, but I'm just gonna, I'll just do it here. I'm just gonna split my thread. There we go. Put my finger in. I'm gonna take my feather. Place my feather in. About, I want it quite long, so towards the, towards the cut end. And let go. And that's trapped. Just take up the slack. And then I'm just going to spin it. And let it tighten up. You can tighten it up as much as you like. Um, you don't want it too tight. Because um, I want, I like all that wispiness. And then I'm just going to run my fingers through it. And just remove any any bits that that are really loose. Really. What I'm going to do is I'm then going to tie it in. Sorry, excuse me. And I'm going to tie it in starting at the back. I'm going to bring it forward, almost palmering it through. There you go, palmering it through the thorax area. So I get this nice fluffy effect that's going to pulse in the water. So effectively, we're, we're representing um, uh, the front legs of the caddis. And you can just tie that off. Let it finish. Come in. Take that off. You can see that I've got these wisps. And you can take any of the really long bits out if you like. You could just leave them in there. Like so. And that pulses in the water. Now, just to finish it off. I'm just going to draw all these forward out of the way and then I'm going to take I'm going to take um, a uh, a marker so these are pro markers let me get that right around these are pro markers um, and they've got this nice bullet tip now this one's going to be this one's sort of like a limey uh, green and I'm just going to color the top above that lateral line that we put in this will extenuate the look of the of the caddis and produce an effect that really does make that top section stand out okay you can see that it's starting to appear like that now um, and I'm just going to tap it with my finger just to take off excess just so I've got the color in there and if you want to, just down the back, I'm just going to use this orange version and I'm just going to face it to me and I'm just going to put a central line down the back, but not all the way to the bottom. So it looks a bit, looks like that. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. I'm just going to tap it with my finger. Like that. Now, um, I like a bit of bit of resin just to uh, just to protect it and to um, and to make it so that it's going to last for a while. He says as he's trying to find his resin. Um, here it is. Um, one of the things I took away, lots of things I took away from the BFFI, but I was watching one of my all-time favourite fly tires, Janda Haas um, tie, um, and I am a real fanboy of his. Um, and he was applying resin so delicately without a massive build-up. And I was watching him. I was thinking, how is he doing that? I don't get it. I use a needle to try and reduce it down. And then suddenly realised that what he was using were these um, these dental um, uh, UV dental applicators. These are these are the things that they they apply all that resin in your in your in your teeth um, when you're at the dentist, and they pack it in. This is what they're using. Um, and I went online, found them on Amazon, bought 300 of them for about three quid. Um, and I've been pl playing with them and they work really well. Um, there's like a little foam, little um, sponge on the top and it absorbs the resin so you don't get a big bulk amount. You just put a little bit on there 
And what I really love about it is, there it is, it's on there, is that I can just rub it on and, it, and I can position it wherever I like. It's a real game changer, I decided. And that's why I love going to these shows and watching, um, watching these tyres. You just add it on like that. There's no massive build-up. You can still see all the segmentation in there, um, but you get that that wet look. Um, when I come in with my UV torch, excuse my hand in the way. Just don't want to. Uh, Project it through, but you can probably see there. You can see the builder, and then we just push it all back. We come in with my toothbrush and because I haven't got a lot of resin on there. It's not tacky, um, so a lot of the tackiness is about the amount that you've got there. Okay, so um, this was um, this was one of those flies that um, I was tying and I used it and my God, did it catch some big fish. So I hope that you took some uh, some good tips from that. Um, feel free to ask any questions if you can. Um, so I'll, I'll just have a little uh, little break for a glass of wine. Um, uh, let's have a look at what we've got here. Um, Let's see what people have said. Uh, okay. Not a lot, really. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, any questions, guys? Because uh, that's what we're here for. Um, What do you use for the collar? Luke, um, I used, uh, I just used a, a Caddis Green um, dubbing, Andrew Scruffy dubbing, and then it was a split thread um, uh, CDC, olive CDC um, hackle to form this fluffy bit. And you can, you can pick all this out, um, have less in there. Um, after a few fish, this gets mullered um, and it looks even better after it's been smashed um by by a couple of fish okay um if you really want to add to other things you could turn it over and you could put in a little hot spot on the belly a little hot spot of orange resin or green something here or even just on top of the um of the tungsten bead as well what could you use instead of the latex um you could use you could use anything. Um, you could cut up some rubber gloves, some thin rubber gloves. If there's some, I've got some gloves here that I use um, for for making some bodies that um, were just cheap ones that I bought from Asda, I think it was, um, and I used them for applying um, flea treatments to the cats. You know, rubbing it in. Um, you know, so um, you could use that. You don't need to use latex for it either. Um, be think outside the box so you could use um uh, you could use form it with dubbing with an overback of of um uh, let's think about this of uh cock pheasant tail so that you've got a, a shell across the back and rib it okay you could do that with it as well um and then you're you're not just mimicking uh, a caddis you're mimicking beta stints you know so you you've got you just change them up a little bit and you've got these these subtle changes into a completely different nymph from maybe a completely different uh, situation, depending on what they're feeding on. OK. Um, uh, I'll tell you now, resin applicators were by a company called Shintop, um, a good helper in life, allegedly. Um, and uh, they come in. They come in packs of three hundred, uh, packs of a hundred, um, and slight, all slightly different sizes. So I've got pink ones, which are the smaller ones. Um, there's purple ones if I'm feeling a bit funky, um, and uh, and these blue ones as well. 
um, but all of them will have their uses and I've got enough there to keep me going. I've had the one from earlier on today that I've used multiple times so it hasn't even hardened, um, it's still soft um, and I can reuse that. Um, so, um, you know, uh, one of the things that I'll try and do is I'll try and put a link up. There was just on Amazon um, that we got hold of those um, and, uh, and it was really good. Um, so Dan, the latex material, uh, nymph skin. Um, uh, I did drop it just now. It's around here somewhere. But oh, there it is. I've got my nymph skin. Virtual nymph it's by. Um, so you've got nymph skin, virtual nymph. Okay, um, it comes in all sorts of different colours, colour ranges. Um, worth getting hold of some. Okay, just to just to up the game, really. Okay, all right. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Yes, thank you, Kieran. Not just talking the pub, right? Okay, I'm getting grief already, uh, in a nice way. Okay, so um, we're going to move on. Um, so that's the starting point um, for our, our sort of sedge caddis um, life cycle. Obviously, this is a caseless caddis. The peeping caddis would be uh, my go-to for a cased caddis variation. Um, and I'll just put that down there. Now, on this next one, okay, we're going to switch hooks to my other absolute favourite hook. Um, and we're going to go to a... Um, a um, this cling camera, um, partridge cling camera, um, 15 BMY barbless hook, um, that is just the bomb. Okay. Um, yes, Derek, I will. I'll put the, uh, the link for the applicators up. Um, I shall have to find it in my, uh, my bit. It was just literally, I just did a quick search, recognized it, thought we'll have some of those, but yes, definitely. Um, Okay, right, so I'm going to put, I'm going to start off this one. So I'm going to tie the peccary emerger um, on on this. And this was a, a, a fly that Kieran and I fished with last season quite, quite a, to a reasonable amount. Um, and it was, it was one of those flies that we'd had a day where we were, where, Nothing was quite taking what we wanted it to take. Um, and I think Kieran said to me, he said, come on, let's try one of those. So we put it on. And as soon as it hit the water, the fish just hit it. And it was like, oh, my God. Um, and it was a beautiful fish as well. And Kieran had it. Um, uh, so. So, um, and, uh, yeah, and it was just beautiful to watch. And it was one of those great up and over takes as well. And it, uh, it's imprinted in my head as one of those all time great, um, great takes. So for this, I'm going to use my Semperfly wax thread in brown. Um, I'm going to start off about two mils away from the eye. And I'm going to run a nice layer of thread. I was always taught to keep it in touching turns. So I apologize about my my um, compulsive nature but this is how my wonderful um, masters all those years ago instructed me and they get really upset if I didn't so I'm going to take it quite far around the bend I want quite a long body on it now this is going to mimic sort of a bit of a freak of nature really because I want it to mimic an egg laying caddis um, so, but I'm calling it an emerger, but it is definitely an egg laying caddis. So when the caddis are laying their eggs, the egg sac um, often looks a, a yellowy, uh, a greeny colour. Um, so I'm going to come back in with my Andrew Scruffy Derby, um, my caddis green. I'm just going to take a tiny pinch. What I'm going to do is just put it, form a dubbing, loop, dubbing noodle move it up I want this quite tight and I'm just going to form a little ball of dubbing at the base of the hook here I'm going to go over it a couple of times it can be quite bulky it's an egg sack don't forget it doesn't have to be tiny you want it to be a trigger point and I'm just going to form it there at the bottom okay um, you can add some more to that if you like you can you can give it a brush out a little bit later um, but that's looking pretty good. 
Okay, for the body material for this, I'm going to use some peccary. So peccary is a wild pig, um, and I've been after peccary for a long time. I've used the synthetic peccary from Semperfly. Um, can't say that it's uh, the, the, I particularly like it, and I do like Semperfly products, but I can't can't really say I like the uh, the the um, artificial stuff. Got this from Cookshill, from Steve at Cookshill. Um, and uh, we were able to uh, secure a couple of patches. Didn't see any at the BFFI, but because I think this is one of those materials that comes in every now and then. And if he's able to get his hands on it, he does. So watch out for his posts when he puts up that he's got some coming in. It's worth getting hold of. Um, so I'm going to take it. What I what I love about the peccary is it's got this barred effect to it. And it's also quite thick, but really spongy. So. Um, they also get split ends. Look, they get split ends. Um, but that's not a problem. Um, I'm just going to bring it in, place it at the bottom to the side, wrap around and bring it onto the top. And then I'm going to very gently tie it down without spinning it around the shank. I'm use my, my nail just to hold it. I'm going to bring it up so that my thread is in line with the hook point. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the peccary. Now what I should do is just very carefully bring. There we go. I'm going to take my peccary and I'm going to. It's quite robust stuff, so you don't need to be really, really gentle with it. But for the first couple of wraps, where the hair is at its thinnest, just be a little bit careful. Um, and I'm just going to do touching wraps up and around. Now, the, the harder you pull it, the flatter it gets. So, you know, I want it quite flat to begin with and then I'm going to release pressure as I work my way up and you can start to see the segmentation that we're getting as we move up then we move back into another brown dark section so we're building up that that body abdomen thorax area of the of the insect itself oh, and it's and the curve of the hook is going to imitate the the bend of the abdomen as 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 the sedge is ovipositing is dropping those eggs into the surface of the uh, just under the surface of the um, of the water and they're dropping down you can see we're going to bring it up and I'm going to bring it quite a way up because I want to trap it down because all of this is going to be hidden this is where your um, your bobbing cradle becomes a real, real boon. So I'm going to bring it up, hold it on top. I'm going to put a drop down one, two, and then a couple of locking wraps, three, four. I'm going to come in with my scissors, forty-five degrees. There it goes. And straight away, we've got this beautiful segmentation. It's just awesome. Um, you could varnish it if you like. But remember, we're trying to reduce the amount of, of mass of this. And, and it, the whole thing intrinsically, if we can use the term float, it, it's not built to float float because everything's heavy. But it's going to get trapped in that surface film, which is where the next sections become really, really pivotal. So I'm just going to bring my thread back because I want quite a lot I want quite a lot of room here for my wing um, and my thorax and the little um, little stubby head that I'm going to put in as well so in it goes like so now for the wing um, I'm going to use um, this um, this hopper hair uh, from Nature's Spirit. I know it's uh, it, it's it's a white. The reason for that is because it makes for a really good sighter on the river. As it as as the as you cast the fly out, particularly if you've had to do a reasonably long cast, as we find on the on the river itching, 
the fish are always on the other bank um, just below it so we get it across and we want to be able to be able to sight exactly where the fly is so this this sort of bleached white deer uh, gives a really good indicator of where the fly is so I'm going to come in and I'm going to take about three quarters of a centimeter maybe a centimeter I'm going to cut it at its base I'm going to get rid of all the fluff back and forth take your time there we go there we go don't worry if you lose bits of deer hair because they're obviously the shorter bits that have fallen off you can see how you know they're quite well um, proportioned together but this is where your hair stacker becomes your your friend so i'm just going to drop those into my hair stacker that i've had for years um, drop them in i'm going to put my thumb over the top and i'm just going to tap it i'll tap it on my other desk actually so that the camera doesn't wobble so i'm just going to tap it um, and You get a nice stacked bunch there. Now I want the the wing to reach down and be in line with the egg sac here. Okay, I don't want it all the way over there and I don't want it really short. I want it in line with the egg sac. So I'm just going to swap hands, place it on top, and I'm going to pinch loop down, back up, and pull onto the top. Of the shank and then just use my other hand just to make sure I've got it where I want it put a second and a third turn in to tie it down and hold it in place and then it's this case of having a look and I'm reasonably happy with that so I'm going to tie that down like so and I'm going to hold it out and I'm then going to tie it down in the thorax area towards the eye but not right onto the eye I need to leave myself a little bit of space now, by taking your time pinch looping and just adding the pressure on when it's needed it stops it all from spinning round the hook you'll get the odd one or two that will do it it's not a problem this is a mimicking a natural insect um, I'm just going to build that up like so and then I tend to leave these bits at the end here right at this point but what you could do now is I hold them at 45 degrees and I come in with my scissors and I nip them off and I'll get that head section okay now we need to put a hackle in. Um, I like to use a grizzle on this one, but today I'm going to use just purely because I bought a new, I bought a new cape. There we go. I bought a new cape um, at the BFFI, um, a Met Grade One, um, uh, beautiful brown cape, and I just want to use it, so I'm going to use it today because um, I get excited about those things. Um, so I'm looking for this. I'm looking for a. a I'm just going to take that off the piece of card actually that's, a, that's annoying um i'm gonna hold it up and you can see that you know these beautiful uniform feathers uh, it's worth paying the money and they have some really good deals at the bffi on capes and i know quite a few people that picked them up i know ash you had quite a few um and yep yeah, there we go so you can use your um your hackle gauge if you like um, I tend to just go based on there you go, um, what I can see. Um, don't worry if you oversize it. It's not a problem. Um, better to be slightly oversized than undersized. Um, I'm going to nip off the end. Um, and I'm just going to pull back the base of my feather like that. And I'm going to come in. And I'm going to nip off. either side barbules on either side 
so I end up with this little comb effect. What that does is it allows the uh, thread to bite in and gives it extra purchase so it doesn't pull out. So how many times have you had a, a hackle that you tied in like that and then when you've gone to spin it round, it has just pulled out. Well, those little tough little bits there will stop or hopefully stop that from happening. And I'm just going to come in. I'm just going to remove that waist end there without cutting my thread and then just tidy it up. So there we go. And now I'm going to put my turns in. I want this to really float. So there you go. One. Uh, so I'm going to just going to put without it spinning. It's just started to turn. Don't want it to do that. There we go. Take your time. That's three, four, five, six, seven. Bring it to the top. I'm just going to wobble my thread through the hackle. I'm just going to trap it down. Now this is the reason I'm using a 12 or, or I might even use the nano silk for this um, because then it it does that you can't actually see the thread when you've trapped down the hackle. I'm going to take that off the end, wet my fingers, pull up the head section and put a couple of turns just below that and then I'm going to take Take my whip finish tool. One, two, three, four. Pull it tight and then position it all back. And then come in like that. Now, I tend not to use too much varnish on my dry flies. I just think it, you know, they're going to get used, they're going to get, they're going to get smashed. Also, I just think it just adds a little bit of extra mass to it that I don't need. Um, and there we have it. There's our peccary emerger. Okay, um, there's our peccary emerger. What you can then do, and I tend not to do it until I'm at, at the at the water side, is you could trim down um, the underside so it sits further into the film. Um, if you're doing it here, what you could do is uh, turn it upside down and just singe them with a uh, with a lighter on its lowest flame um, and uh, what that does is it produces little stubby dots so when they sit in the surface film it looks like the legs of the insect are actually sitting in the in the surface film so um, we've got we've got our first parts of the life cycle I suppose this is supposed to be a merger but I put the egg sac on as an extra trigger so we've got the larva um, we've got the emerging sedge um, the next stage is to go on to a pattern that not traditionally a sedge pattern, but I use it a lot and it catches a lot of fish. Right, let's have a look and see what um, see what if there's any questions. Right, so uh, yeah, Graham. Um, I will be doing the sparkling back buzzer for you um, after our conversation last week. Hi, Graham. It's good to see you. Met Graham at the BFFI, Graham Webb at the BFFI last week um, and uh, had amazing conversations and uh, he joined the group. It's good to see you here. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Eric, yes, you could use strip quills. Absolutely. Uh, moose mane, horse hair, um, uh, cow tail, um, you know, different colours. You know, just uh, just alternate between them. Um, just, you know, be absolutely um, uh, inventive. Um, you could strip um, if you've got an old Chinese uh, cock um, uh, cape. Uh, don't use your nice, um, nice full grade ones. Uh, but if you strip off all the barbules and you're left with the um, you're left with the stalks, you could use those as well. That'd be really good. Um and uh, so, yeah, definitely. Um, 
peppery. Somebody, I think I had on here, does it get brittle? Um, the, um, it can get brittle. Um, so often what I do, and I do this with my quills as well, is I'll have a little egg cup with warm water in it and I'll I'll put I'll just drop them and um, tip end in into it um, and leave them in there to soak um, and uh, and it just softens down um, softens down the the outer layer okay um, so uh, what else have we got sorry I'm just having a, a little drink of wine Okay. Anything else anybody wants to wants wants to ask? It's a great fly this one. Um and it's one that um I've been I've been building up a, a new dry fly box, there it is. Um and there's a row of them somewhere in there hiding, but in a slightly different colour, um with a different colour um uh deer hair wing on it. Um so Adrian, um, hi, nice to see you on here, Adrian. Um, and thank you for that wonderful article you wrote in Fly Fishing and Fly Tying at the end. It really did make me laugh, um, as your as your articles when you write them at the end really do. Um, it's Cooks Hill, um, Steve at Cooks Hill Fly Tying. Um, you're not too far away from me, Adrian. So if, uh, if you're ever in Winchester and having to be up for coffee, coffee, I can pass you a couple of strands under the table. Um, so um, so there we go. That's our peccary emerger. Right. Okay. So, God, an hour down already. Um, Dave, what deer hair do you prefer for the wing? Do you know what? Um, nature's spirit hopper deer hair. Um, it's soft. Uh, I just can't get enough of it. And I've got it in all sorts of different colours. Um, and I also use it for spinning as well. It's not really thick enough for spinning. Um, um, but um, I just... I, I just like it. Just you know, sit there and rub it on your face and stuff. Um, it's really um, like most things at the moment because getting supplies in from um, from the states is pretty tough at the moment. Um, we've got to uh, you know, we've got to try and I try and buy whenever I see it. I just buy it in. Um, okay, right. Going to use the same hook for for the next fly. So for my stimulator. And I'm going to use the same threads. Um, so um, I'm going to start off, leave a couple of millimetres before the eye. Nice underlying thread body. For this fly, this is really important. And I think for dries in particular, it's really important to have uniformity um, with your underbodies because you have no distortions in the fly. Although you could argue that in nature there's lots of distortions and and most of the duns and most of the emerging insects do do not make it into their full splendid glory they're often crippled in some way um, but it just makes it easier to tie so i'm going to bring it right down again um, quite far down and then i'm just going to bring it up in line with the point and i'm going to get rid of my waist tag then I'm just going to adjust the positioning of my hook, like so. Because I'm going to put the uh, put the tail and the underbody in. I'm going to go back to using my uh, my deer hair here. Same one again. You know, um, I'm not one for for just suddenly jumping um, for new materials. If I'm tying lots of these things, I just want a different uh, a different silhouette on the surface, a different size. Um, I use the same materials. Now this particular um, fly. The stimulator is actually designed to mimic stonefly, um, which we don't really get down here in the south. In fact, we don't get them. We get them, used to get them in South Wales, like Dionorus and things like that. Um, but and further north you go. Um, but it's an American pattern. But I think it just makes for a great searching sedge pattern. And when we're on the river, <laughs> we'll often go right. What should we use? Right, let's stick a stimulator on and see if anything's going to come up and snaffle that and smack it. And um, you'd be surprised at how even the smallest grayling will try and take a great big massive stimulator um, and often are very successful in taking it. Um, and uh, it's great sport, great fun. 
So I'm going to cut off, cut off a, uh, an amount of deer hair. Um, and I always look at it and I go, cut it and go, no, I need less than that. So I'm just going to take a bit, bit off from either end, either side. It's a bit too much there for me. The tail of this, I don't want it to be absolutely humongous. There we go. And I'm just going to stack that very gently in my hair stacker. Thumb over the top. There we go. So there we go. So nicely all placed together. Um, and then I'm going to hold it in my left hand because I'm right handed. I'm going to bring my thread round. Like I did on the deer hair emerger, um, I'm going to place it at the end. Now I don't want it to be massive. Um, so I'm looking at it and I'm looking about on these hooks, the tail, I tend to go for the length of the, of the, the flat part of the shank at the top. So I'm just going to measure it against here. Um, and it's better to have it slightly shorter than too long on these particular patterns. Um, now, I'm just going to pinch loop, bring it round under and pull it tight across the top. Don't worry if you get the odd bit that goes just either side. It's not a problem because actually all this is going to be hidden uh, apart from the tips of the tail. But actually it's going to form part of the underbody. And you can see, I just want to make that a little bit shorter. You can see tie that down it flares out a little bit you're always going to get that because of the nature of the deer hair the deer hair itself has got little little cell compartments inside if you look at it under a microscope um, uh, it's not packed it's, it's not hollow it's not packed full of air it's got individual um, sort of honeycomb style sh um, uh, cells all within it um, because obviously these these animals want to care, want to stay warm I'm going to take it all the way up and you can see that I'm forming um, an underbody just trapping down my deer hair up to the point at which it is in line with there we go in line with if I bring it up the start of the flat part of the hook so Scissors. Just going to bring that bit in. That bit, bit of rogue, rogue deer hair here on this side. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Ping that off. Nice little forty-five degree cut. There we go. And tidy up. Now the tidying up is really important because it flattens out the unsightly parts. Of the underbody there we go now you'll see son tao on um, on instagram if you've not come across him yet he ties an awesome stimulator um often much bigger i go down to size 18s and 20s for my stimulators um but um he will um put the body material could be flash it could be uh uni miler in, in whatever colors um we're going to use we're going to go more traditional we're going to use some dubbing um, and get that all uh, all going. Um, but before I do that, um, I need a little bit of copper wire. Um, I'm going to use some very fine copper wire, Semperfly um, 0 0.1 millimeter copper wire. Uh, so I don't really. This isn't adding mass. This is protection um, for the body material um, because those those fishes have got really sharp teeth. Um, so I'm just going to. Nip that off. I'm going to bring my tying thread back up. And I'm going to now. If you ever, if you do struggle tying it in and keeping it in one place, the other thing to do is bring it under and lift it up, and then drop it where exactly where you want it, and then just hold it in line with the hook. Try and keep it in the same plane. And bring it down 
like so. That's going to go in my material clip. Next stage, Andrew Scruffy dubbing. What a surprise, Andrew Scruffy dubbing. But I'm not going to go for the caddis green on this one. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually on this one. I'm going to go for, um, I'm going to go for this golden olive for my body material. Um, and a little bit of wax. And it just dubs so lo so well. It just forms a beautiful noodle. That you can just make as thick or as um, or as thin as you like. It works really well in a in a split thread or in a dubbing loop as well. I'm just going to move that up. There we go. And I'm not too worried about it being all fine and. I just want it I just want it to produce a nice underbody that's got a bit of character to it that's got a bit of flair you can see you've got all these buggy bits sticking out straight away it's already starting to look a bit like an insect a little bit more just to finish it off on this top bit here we go here we go and we're going to finish Ooh, round about there. Now, the next stage um, is we're going to put a palmer hackle in. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to use a, um, a, a grizzle hackle. This is a YT um, grizzle hackle. Um, I don't want it to take all this out. I don't want it to be really, really um, long. Um, so I'm just going to find a nice, nice feather. There we go. That's what I found. So there we go. So you can see this beautiful whiting genetic feather with this beautiful barring, and it's the same width all the way along, um, which is fantastic. I'm just going to take that on, and like I did previously, I'm just going to pull the barbules at the end. I'm going to form that little, that little ladder. It's going to stop it pulling out. Place it on the side with the good side of the feather facing me. And a loose wrap just to trap it in. There we go. And then I'm just going to trap the stalk in all the way down. And then just nip off that tiny little bit there. And then tie that in. Now it's at this point, it's always good just to either put a half hitch in or just put in what, uh, one or two whip finishes um, because you're going to knock this um, and uh, you can put it in your in your cradle then as well, get it out of the way. And you could use the full rotary function of the of the uh, of the vice if you like. I'm not going to do that today because you won't see it. But I'm going to take my take my feather. And at the front here, I'm going to put two turns, two turns, there we go. And then I'm going to palmer it through my body, traveling down equally equidistant all the way along until we get to the end. And I'm going to take my, my wire. I'm going to trap it down like that. I can let go of it, keeping the wire taut. And then I'm going to wiggle the wire back and forth. And I'm just going to trap down that palmered hackle. You are going to trap barbules, but the more you wiggle it, the less you will trap. And you will be able to see the wire. But only if you're really looking and it's there to protect the body, protect the hackle so that, you know, hopefully you can take a number of fish with this particular fly once you dried it out, cleaned it up. There we go. I'm going to put in an extra bit there. Take up the slack on my bobbin. Move my cradle out of the way. There we go. A couple of turns in. 
couple more for good measure. And then I'm going to wiggle this around, get it to break off. There we go. And then this, one good yank, just pings off. Don't need to cut it. And we're left with our tail, body, palmed hackle running down. Um, later on, again, you can trim these down, flatten it out, take it across the bottom, singe them, completely up to you. I'm not going to do that at this moment in time. Um, now for the wing. Aha, guess what? It's my deer hair again. Um, so I'm going to take a pinch of deer hair. And it's hard to say exactly how much because a pinch is a pinch with my fingers is really small. Um, but the best thing to do is then offer it up against the fly. Um, and again, I'm using the um, uh, the bleached um, because literally I want it to uh, to be a sighter. So I'm just going to cut that and just drop that or take the fluff off. Then he rogue small bits drop it in give it a give it a flatten and there we go got a rogue one there let's pinch him out there we go got rid of him this is where i generally sneeze and it goes all over the place and then i pinch it and i've got that now there we go. So for the wing, for the wing, I want the wing to just cover the back. So you could take it to in line with the edge of the tail if you like. I tend to put mine a little bit shorter than that, just so it's like the length of the body, like so. Um, I want to reduce the chances of it spinning when it's on the um, when it's on the uh, when it's on my leader. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come in with a big pair of scissors and I'm just going to take out. The top part of my hackle there so that my wing will sit flush along the body if you, if you imagine and think about how a caddis or what a caddis looks like it's almost got that tent like wing shape across the back don't rush it measure it up look at it better to be happy with it. So I'm looking at about that length. And I'm going to pinch. So we've got a pinch turn, pinch wrap, down, up, and I'm going to pull it down on top of the hook shank and then drop in a locking turn. I'm quite happy with that just by the look of it. Take my time, there it is. Look at it from your side, because i got a camera there. Um, don't worry if you get the odd bit that drops down onto the side. You can always just adjust those, you can nip them off. Don't worry about it. These are for catching fish. And there we go. And then I'm gonna hold the waist ends. And just give it a real pull to lock them in place. There we go, rogue, let's get rid of him. There we go. And then, like I did with the tail, I'm gonna form an underbody at the head section. There we go. And, 45 degrees in. Like so. And then tidy up the head section. Now remember this is a, a traditionally a stonefly pattern, but it mimics a caddis exceptionally well. And it'll float forever. It's really good in um, in, in 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 riffles, um, and if you've got some uh, some white water, and you know that there's fish at the tail of a of a run, um, running it down 
they'll take that they'll take that fly um now we're going to go back to um i'm going to put in my brown hackle um at the front so try and get one that was very similar to the last fly from the same area once you've once you've pinpointed them on your on your um on your capes it often becomes easier then to to find them the next time because you think oh, i was from that area so again i'm going to take my my feather and i'm going to form my little comb tidy it up there we go offer it up good side to me trap it down there we go and nip off the end bit now i do not want a massive amount of material build up here um, because otherwise your hacker will just slide absolutely everywhere and this is where the the taper becomes really important so i've got that in place and now i'm going to go back to my dubbing um, and now for this next bit i'm going to use a contrasting color so i'm going to go I, I, for the last one it was it was golden olive there it is. I'm going to go here to this cinnamon for this front section. Um, so I need a little, little pinch, a little bit of wax. A nice, I want this dubbing noodle to be quite thin. So I'm going to put quite a lot of pressure on it to form a very tight dubbing noodle just move it up and I'm going to put an under layer I'm going to try not to try not to overlay it so it's just all going to be in one layer and we're in, in between each turn I'm just going to stop just give it a little tweak back until I come down towards the eye. Now you can see why I left that couple of millimetres at the front. Because I need to put a head in. And I quite like a nice tidy head on a fly. Don't like bulk. I'm just going to bring that in. Now what you can do here again is whip finish there. Cradle. And on this front section, I'm going to put two turns at the back. One, two. And then I'm going to palmer my hackle through this front section, through the thorax. A couple of turns. Stroke them back. Till we get to the, get to the front. That's three turns there. I'm going to hold it up. Now you notice I'm not using hackle pliers for this. And, and the reason I'm not using hackle pliers is a personal thing. I find that I often put too much pressure on using hackle pliers. Um, so they slip and then it all comes undone. Um, so with long feathers, I quite like just to do it by it with my fingers because I can feel, feel what's happening. So there we go. So form that front section i'm going to stroke it all the way back wet your fingers stroke it all the way back and i'm going to form my head to trap everything down and really secure it all in take your time there we go and I'm going to come in one, two, three, four. Tighten it up. Now you've got a lot of material on this fly and a lot of sections, but man, does it catch fish. I wouldn't be without these in my box. So much so that I end up using them all or giving them away. And then I end up having to tie more. And it's it's a fly that I absolutely love tying. There we go. Just nip that off. There we go. 
Voila, we have our stimulator. And you can see that I've got a rogue, rogue bit of uh, deer hair here that's just going to annoy me. For no other reason than it's just annoying me. I'm going to nip it off. There we go. We got this tent like wing with the tails. And that's going to be pretty buoyant. Not a lot's going to sink that. So, I hope you've enjoyed our three flies today. Um, I'm just going to go back to my glass of wine. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to look at um, look at anything so far. Um, so, I'm hoping that I've still got you here. Um, I might just have to refresh my screen. Um, there we go. Um, I'm uh, hoping I didn't lose you at all. Hoping you're all still there because I can't see anything on my on my on my laptop at the moment. All I can see is for the last fly. Um, so hopefully, let me just uh, have a quick little look. Anyway, doesn't doesn't really matter. Aha! I've got you back. Okay, so, right, so Dave, serious question. I noticed when palmering the hackle, you kept the hackle at pretty much 90 degrees. I've seen others who wrap the hackle, um, wrap the hackle flat. Um, yeah, um, it's just how I was taught how to do it, Dave, when I was tying bibios and things like that. Um, you know, um, I just like the effect that it gives, and, it, and, and you get these, you get all the bits that, that point out, and with a high quality hackle as well um i don't i don't really want to trap too many of those those barbules i want them to stand out i want them to be part of an intrinsic part of the fly um so you know it 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 just works for me i suppose okay pleasant you know for you know and that that's that's what i ultimately do um so um God, not many questions i think everybody was watching and everybody was looking um so i'm um, i hope you enjoyed um, sort of that hour and hour and 20 odd minutes um, if you've got any uh, any other questions please throw them up um, but uh, I'm going to enjoy my glass of wine um, and uh, I'll download this piece of video and we'll get it up on the uh, uh, on the Lost Lake Fly YouTube page so that those who aren't members of the group can come and watch it um, but I hope you enjoyed it um, and if you um, if you got any questions please don't be afraid uh, so Adrian, uh, lovely, thank you Adrian, lovely tie, another interesting material is a very thin, porous, buoyant orange foam for the underbody, great, absolutely, absolutely, um, you know, um, you know the, we find, as I know that you're in this area, um, uh, we find on the itching, there aren't many, many areas on our beach where it's really fast flowing water, so, you know, foam flies, we, we don't tend to, uh, fish with too many although i really need to get more beetles um in my um in my box um did have quite a quite a lot of fun with um with grasshopper patterns last season as well um so um we'll be back uh hopefully next week i have to have a look at the diary um i know that next week i'm doing a bit of guiding next friday so um i might be absolutely shattered but not too shattered to get up uh, and, and and tie some nice flies we'll try and keep the same themes where we're looking at the the life cycles the nymphs um, but i do know that graham i owe you a flashback buzzer so next week flashback buzzer is definitely going to be featuring for us okay and as we're coming into march maybe maybe we get into the hawthorn flies and the more terrestrial type flies um you know just so that we've got those in the armory as well um so uh so let's have a look uh paddy uh the dubbing box well this is um this is a, a dubbing box it's a um one that i made up myself um i can buy in and and i can sell um uh, through the web store um the 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 cases so that there's nothing in them and you can fill them with yours um, i've done it for my for my trout stalker scruffy dubbing I just added to pack them in with my with a dubbing needle. Did it for my uh, for snowshoe hair seals. For it just makes it easy if I'm moving from one place to another, um, doing demos and things like that, or showing people. I can take the whole box with me, um, and you you know you can fill them up. Um, I'll put up a link. Um, I've got I think I've got a couple 
um, uh, um, still dotted around. Um, but yeah, if you've got any other questions, please, uh, please let me know. Um, one other thing I am going to do today. Um, I should have said this right at the beginning, but those of you that are still here, um, if you would like to tie these three flies, OK, um, I would be absolutely stoked. So I'm going to open up a competition for the week. Um, I've got a little goodie bag of Semperfly materials and other things that I've got um, that I'll piece together um, to win the goodie bag. What you guys need to do, if, you, if you're willing, is to tie all three flies and send me some pictures, um, either through the Facebook group. Um, direct message or at mark at lostlakefly.co.uk now this competition will run up until um, next Friday because I'd like to be able to show, be able to talk about um, the ones I've seen um, so if you want to give it a go let me know um, can admin enter of course you can Dave of course you can um, absolutely um, there'll be some nano silks in there there'll be lots of various other things that I've got um, the, the, I think uh, you'll find really, really useful. If you're watching this after the live tying, you can still enter, um, and you can, you can, uh, you can email me at mark at lostlakefly.co.uk. Um, but the, uh, the closing date, and I'm going to be very, let me just find my cal my calendar. The closing date for this, um, is going to be, um, at the latest, uh, lunchtime. Round about 12 o'clock on Friday, the 25th of February, please. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. I'll be back again, hopefully next week. Um, in the meantime, happy tying. It's not too long before the season starts. Let's get out there. Let's get fishing. Stay safe in this horrible, horrible storm. <laughs>